Having a good hero section is super important to keep the user engaged with your website as soon as they load it up. And a quick way to do that is by adding some 3D into your hero design. Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're designing a website in Figma and adding some 3D in Adobe Dimension. It's a pretty cool process. I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step through the whole thing. So let's go ahead and get started. Like all of my design tutorials, I have the completed project file in the community tab for channel members. So you can head over there and download that if you're interested. So we'll go ahead and get started with F on the keyboard for the frame tool. And I'm selecting the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Automatically, I'm gonna turn on my layout grid and adjust that to a 12 column layout with a 100 point margin on each side. And then I'm gonna adjust that to a blue color. T on the keyboard, we'll start creating our typography. I'm gonna start with the logo. And today we're gonna to be using Hoppins font. So I'll set that. I'm gonna bump the logo up to medium weight and then 32 point for the size. I'm gonna put that on the second column on the left with 60 points from the top of the frame. T on the keyboard once more, I'll start to create the navigation links. I'm gonna start with services and then I'm going to hold option or alt and click and drag to create a duplicate. Shift A to activate auto layout. Then I'm gonna select both of those texts and adjust them to regular weight and 16 point font. Now I'm gonna adjust the space in between to 48 points and then we'll align that to the right. I'm gonna select one of our links and copy and paste until we have five and then adjust the text. I'm gonna drag that to the top right and it should have a column of space on the right as well, but we'll fix that later. I'm gonna drag down a guide to the baseline of our logo. And that's what we're gonna to use to align our navigation links. So we'll drag those to the baseline and then make sure it's on that second to right column and align that. Next, let's create our H1 text, which is gonna be the largest text. So T on the keyboard, and I'm just going to generate some text here. And once we've created that, we'll set that to medium. And then I'm gonna bump that all the way up to 70 points. I'm gonna adjust the line height to 140% line height. So 70 times 1.4 will give you 98. We're gonna align that next to the logo on that second hand column. And I'm gonna put 184 points of spacing below our logo and our navigation links, just to give that some space. Next, let's create a paragraph that we're gonna put on the right side. So I've just created some text here, and then I'm gonna style it to 16 point and regular weight, similar to our navigation links. And then I'm just gonna adjust that line height back to auto. Pasting in a bit of text, I'm then gonna position this so that I can drag it out to three columns wide, just to fit our layout. And mine changed to gray for some reason, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that back to a black color. And then I want this to align visually with our H1. So I'm gonna drag down a guide to the top of the majority of our text there. And then I'm just going to align that with that guide. Now we need to create a call to action to go under that paragraph. So I'm just gonna grab that text with option to create a duplicate. And then I'm gonna type in contact us. And we'll hit shift A to turn on auto layout. Really easy way to create buttons. I'm adjusting the left and right padding to 36 and the top to 16. And then you can really see our button come to life when we add a fill. And I'm gonna add a nice blue color. So I'm gonna go 2B99FF. And we can add a bit of weight to that text. So I'm gonna change that from regular to medium. And then we'll make sure that is aligned center. And then I'm gonna drag this up till it aligns with the bottom of our H1. And if I drag down a guide here, you can see it's aligning with the bottom of the text right on the baseline. At this point, I like to get a good preview and see what this looks like before we go ahead and start adding color. So this looks good. So I'm gonna grab the desktop frame and I'm just gonna to go to the fill color and we're gonna give this a nice black color of 070707. Since the rest of our typography is 0000, we can just grab that with the selected colors and change it to white. And then we can just update the button to the new black color we're using. And we automatically have a dark theme layout. And I'm gonna turn off my guides with Shift G and my rulers with Shift R just to get a good feel of the design. Holding option, I'm gonna create one more thing of text here. And this is just gonna be about Webflow, which this agency uses to build their websites. So I've just highlighted learn more and then went to the three dots and underlined that. 
so the user knows they can click on it. And we're gonna use another auto layout, so shift A to turn that on. And I'm just gonna drag this down to the bottom, turning on my guides again with shift G. And we're gonna add some vertical padding of 12 points. Just gonna make sure that's aligned on the bottom. And then we'll give this a nice gray fill of 141414, just so it stands out from our background. Then I'm gonna drag this full width of the frame. And then we can adjust the padding on the left just by grabbing a hold of that pink handle. And I think it's gonna be 230 to snap that right to that column. Now I want to have a close icon on this so the user can close it. So I'm just gonna go in my libraries and activate my UI icons and then search for a close icon. And we'll just drag that in to our auto layout and it will automatically adjust. Then we're gonna use a really useful shortcut. I'm gonna select the alignment I want and then hit X on my keyboard and that will adjust the spacing mode so that my X is on the right and my text is on the left. I'm just gonna swap that to a white fill and then I'm gonna add 24 padding on the right side just by grabbing hold of that pink handle and adjusting it. The X is looking a little big so I'm gonna scale that down holding Shift and Alt till it's 20 by 20. So that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna turn off everything and make sure this is what I want. With that done, I'm gonna grab a hold of that frame, double click and call it design. And then we can export this so we can head over to Adobe Dimension to create our 3D. I'm exporting as a 1X PNG. So in Adobe Dimension, the first thing we need to do is set our width and height of our canvas to the exact dimensions of our frame. And then I'm going to go up to the top and hit that drop down and fit the canvas. So now we have our new working area. Selecting the environment in the scene panel, you have access to the background, which we can toggle to image and just drag in that image we just exported, which is our actual layout from Figma. So here we can add things to our scene. So I'm just gonna go to models and I'm just gonna click on the sphere. And you can see if I drag on these handles, it can scale it. So I'm gonna hold shift and just scale this down in size overall. Then I can click and drag on it to move it around and place things where I want them. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of spheres to this. So once I got the position here, I can hold option or alt and click and drag to create a duplicate similar to Figma. Then I'm just gonna scale that down to a smaller size and position it. Then I'm just going to continue to do that until I have a layout that I like adding these spheres all around the scene just to create a cool layout. To keep this from looking too repetitive, I'm now gonna add a new shape. I believe it's called a torus. So I'm just gonna click on that and add this in. And I'm gonna actually rotate this one by clicking on the circular handles and then scale this down a bit. So my idea is I want these threads to come through this torus and kind of behind and in front of some of these spheres. So I'm just gonna adjust this torus into my scene here at a slight angle so we can see those threads come through that torus. So you'll get a better visual of that when we go back to Figma. But now you'll see that this is actually clipping through the ground. So I'm just gonna go to environment and then you can turn off the ground plane just by hitting that toggle switch. And then I no longer need my guidelines. So I'm gonna to toggle off my grid by going up to view toggle grid. So now we get a better view of what this is gonna look like when it's in Figma. So I think that really helps to make these adjustments. And so I'm just gonna finish this up by tweaking this exactly into what I want. Another cool thing you can do is click on this little camera with the star and set a view just by hitting that plus icon. So if you accidentally were to mess up and move around in the scene and you wanna get back to where you were, you can just click on that. That ensures that if I accidentally move this around, I can always render this exact view later on. So that's a good tip. So now what I'm gonna do is hold shift and grab all of the spheres in our scene and the torus, and then I'm going to apply a material. So in the top left, I'm just gonna click on the material tab and I'm just gonna add a mat just by clicking and dragging it. And that's going to apply that to all of our selected elements. Then we can just go over to the scene tab and click on this arrow. You can see they're all linked there. And I'm gonna adjust this color to a lighter black color, 1A, 1A, 1A. Now I'm gonna grab the torus and I'm actually gonna click on that link to de-link it. 
so that when I update this to CCC, CCC, which is a nice gray color, it's not gonna update the rest of them. Then I'm just gonna do this for one other sphere just to add a little bit more color variation. And I've got the colors on all of my scene objects. So if I hit this little icon in the top right, we can get a quick render of that. Not a whole lot changes here, but I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go to lighting, which is the third tab on the left. And I'm gonna add a neon effect to this. So I'm gonna click on this one and it adds this kind of bluish to purple gradient to everything. And I think it looks pretty cool. So with all of that applied, we are ready to actually render this. So I'm gonna head over to the render tab in the top left. And here I wanna select my render view, which is what I called that view that I bookmarked. I'm gonna give it a name and I wanna choose the highest quality. And then I'm gonna set this to Photoshop 32 bit. Then you can name your file and hit render. So once that's done, you can open it up in Photoshop and it'll look something like this. I'm just gonna to toggle off the background layer since we don't need that UI. And I'm also gonna remove that background color. Then we can go to export and then export that as a PNG. Back in Figma, we'll drag that newly exported image in to our frame. And then we'll align that vertically and horizontally center. Since it's the same dimensions as our frame, it should auto align very nicely. I'm gonna send it to the back with left square bracket key. And now we can grab the pencil with P and start to add those threads that I was talking about. So I'm just going to start over on the left hand side and add a point. And then I'm just gonna add some curves to this. So I'm gonna click and drag out my handle. So I get a nice curve that I want. So that thread's kind of going through that torus and then it's gonna have a nice curve on the end of it. Once I have that, I'm going to go back and adjust the curves to make sure that they look really nice. So for me, I'm actually snapping them horizontally, which is gonna make sure that curve is nice and smooth. There's no like jagged pointy bits in it. And once I have my thread completed, I'm gonna change it to a white color. And then I'm going to create a bunch of duplicates with Command-C, Command-V, or Control-C, Control-V to copy and paste it. And then I'm just gonna move them up and down a few points and rotate them until I have a bunch of different ones in variation to kind of make it look like this nice rope thread. And then I've also grouped mine together with Command-G and called it thread. And I'm gonna set them to 0.5 for the stroke, just to make them a little bit smaller. Then I'm adjusting them to a linear gradient. This is where we're gonna adjust the light that's hitting them. So I'm setting each end to pure white at 70% opacity. And then in the middle, I'm gonna add a new swatch and set that to 100. Then I'm gonna add some variations on this line. So I'm gonna set some opacity to 30, and then I'm gonna add one in there for like 80, just to add a little bit more light change. So it kind of looks like the light is hitting these, making them look a little bit more like threads. So once we're done there, I'm just gonna drag them all the way down to the bottom, right above our 3D render. And you'll notice right away if I zoom in here that our threads are not actually going through the torus or going behind that sphere shape. And that's because we need to go back to Photoshop and we actually need to kind of cut those pieces out. So I'm using the lasso tool and I'm just grabbing that piece of the torus Then I'm gonna hit Command G and it will create that selection on a new layer. I'm gonna repeat that same process to grab a hold of this sphere and hit Command J once more. And then I'm gonna to toggle off the visibility of our original render. We can simply export that as a quick PNG and back in Figma, we'll just drag and drop that image in. Then if we horizontally and vertically center that, you'll see that it goes right into place and we'll just make sure we drag that on top of our thread this time so that it looks like the thread's actually going through that torus, which you'll see there, and it's actually going behind that sphere. So now the final thing I'm gonna do is go to plugins and I'm gonna use a noise plugin to add a bit of texture to the 3D in our design. So I'm just gonna drag up the density of this. And then when I've created that, I'm also going to change that to a color burn. And then we just need to play with the opacity. I believe I set mine to about 20% at the end to get a really nice textured look. I'm adding it across the entire frame just by clicking and dragging it out. You can see the effect applied there. I've called that noise, and now I'm just gonna drag that down in the layers panel and just make sure I add it over top of all of my 3D, but it's still behind all of my text layers, so it's not 
messing with any of the call to action buttons or text. Finally, we need to make that adjustment that I talked about on our navigation, just moving it over one column so that it aligns nicely with the rest of our design. Hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial designing this nice hero section in Figma using Adobe Dimension for some nice 3D. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for weekly design and Figma related videos. In the meantime, check out these videos. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.